give me a few seconds. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone on Facebook. Welcome this morning. Hey, guys, Dawn here, Bridal Business School. Welcome to the live stream this morning. I'm dual broadcasting on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I want to thank those of you listening and watching on the replays and for those of you that are listening on the podcast. I'm going to be uploading this into the Bridal Business podcast if you haven't yet um, been listening to the podcast go to one of your favorite podcast apps and download bridal business um, and uh, listen up we've got a, a good 12 13 episodes that you guys can listen to all right so today I'm going to be talking about the changes that are happening on Facebook and it's Facebook's family of apps and kind of um share with you what they are doing moving forward and um sort of how that's going to affect us as business owners and i want to hear your thoughts as well because there's been a few updates just recently and yesterday uh mark zuckerberg um had his investors call where he uh reports on the first quarter of the year to his investors um and uh he shared his community updates. So I've got a few updates from that as well. I want to say a big thank you to Simone and Martha who have um, allowed me to stream live in their groups this morning as well. So I'm streaming into uh, the Bridal Size community and I'm also uh, streaming into the Australian Bridal Size community as well as uh, the Business and Makeup group. So thank you um, respectively to you guys for allowing me to do that. All right, let's talk, first of all, let's have a quick recap about what has been happening lately with Facebook, okay? So the first thing is, is that um, there's been talk that the news feed is, is kind of disappearing, I guess. I don't think it's actually going to completely go away. I just think we're going to see it in a completely different format. Now, apparently when Facebook first... Um, announced that they were bringing in a news feed, I think back in like 2007 possibly, there was a big uproar about, oh my God, we don't need a, a news feed. And now like it's one of the things we're just so used to it that we, you know, scroll through the news feed and, and that's how we, a lot of the time we come across content, right? Come across content from our favorite uh, broadcasters and stuff. So it's kind of um, strange that this is, um, you know, this is going to happen, that they're going to, change it somehow now i don't think it's going to be disappearing it's certainly not going to be disappearing overnight um but there's been a few um new kind of i guess <clears throat> a new um a few sneak peeks at what we could possibly be seeing and i'm gonna um, i'll switch over onto my screen for those of you who are on instagram um if you want to jump onto facebook to see what, what everyone else can see or if you want to watch the replay on that you absolutely can i'll try and describe it as best as i can um, but basically, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has said this. They want to go more to having a very private fo focused uh, platform. So they want to look at encrypting messages. Now, Facebook own WhatsApp and then obviously Instagram. And then we've got Messenger, which is our other, which is the Facebook um messaging at the moment whatsapp is the only one of those ones that is encrypted meaning that nobody can read or look at the messages that are sent between um parties on whatsapp but however um on instagram and on uh, messenger we can see it right so we can if they can and, and the governments can check it out and facebook can see exactly what we're saying okay it's not private private even though it's private messaging it, basically what Mark Zuckerberg is saying is that they want to move to more of an encrypted messaging um, platform and also they want to move to ephemeral content, ephemeral meaning that it's short lived. Now for any of you users, anyone out there use Snapchat, let me know if you use Snapchat because for those of you that use Snapchat, if you've ever messaged your friends, you'll know that that message disappears once the person has read it. Yeah, so it's kind of like the same thing. They're looking at private focused messaging that is short lived okay so short lived content because people want to know that what they're going to say is you know not going to come back and bite them in the butt in a couple of years time right so good morning everyone hey guys hey judy hey mariah Cameron said hi hi Ibra. hi how are you going today good morning good morning donna hey victoria welcome thanks guys yeah come on say hi please come on tell me where you're where you're uh, joining me from i'd love to know where 
um, where we're reaching today. Um, I know that uh, Donna's in, in uh, I want to go Queensland. Help me out here, Donna. Hey, Renee, morning. How are you going today? Oh, Victoria's in Florida. Welcome, welcome. So it's great to have you guys on today. So, all right, so let's talk, first of all, let me show you this. I wanna show you what, uh, basically what Mark Zuckerberg has said. So I'm gonna click over onto my screen. I'm gonna read it for those of you that are on um, Instagram. Okay, so he said that he's shared the community. I'm not gonna read all of this, guys, but he shared the, <laughs> Sydney, she said, <laughs> Hey Allegra, how are you going today? So she, he shared the community update. He said now, okay, so the our community now includes 2.7 billion around the world who use Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger each month. And I think it says 2.1 of those um, use them at least once a day, one of those apps at least once a day. That's huge numbers right now. I'm gonna scroll down because what he is saying here is that he believes that Facebook and Instagram are like, it's like, for the past, look here, for the past 15 years, Facebook and Instagram have become the digital equivalents of the town square where you can do almost anything you want with lots of people. Um, you can stay in touch with your friends, meet new people, find communities. Okay, so that's what he's saying. He's basically saying that uh, Facebook and Instagram are the are, are like the town square and he wants to move into more of a, of a privacy base, like your living room. As if you're in your own living room and you can talk and chat among your friends, it's private, nobody else can listen into what you're saying, okay? So he is saying, however, that I expect the digital town squares like Facebook and Instagram will always be important and will continue to grow in importance. So don't think that just by him converting this into a private focused um, app that he's uh, going to be doing away with all of our public content and, and our business profiles and all that kind of stuff. It, to me, that doesn't sound like what he's doing, but he is going to be focusing on building out a, a more kind of WhatsApp based uh, messenger service. Now, he's also said as well, um, that they're concentrating on a couple of different things. So it says here, privacy focused platform will be built around several principles. So private interaction, so you should have the simple and intimate spaces. Encryption, in other words, nobody can read your content. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, guys. What do you think about people not being, about Facebook um, not being able to read into uh, your messages? Bear in mind, the types of people that use Facebook for not so, such a good purpose. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. What do you think about them not being able to flag things and be able to, because I mean, Facebook have got a lot of AI, right? A lot of artificial intelligence. They can scan posts, they can scan um, uh, messaging for certain, you know, trigger words, things like that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Let me know. Um, so encryption, so reducing permanence, you shouldn't have to worry about what you share coming back to hurt you a year later. So we won't keep around messages or stories for longer than necessary. Um, safety, um, everything that they're gonna do is kept safe. And obviously we've had lots of you know security breaches. This last year was not a good year for Facebook, really was not a good year. Um, interoperability, okay, so interoperability, interop Probability, that's a good word, isn't it? So interoperability basically means is that we should, no matter what platform we're using, whether that be WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, we should be able to um, communicate within those apps. Now that's not to say they're not gonna merge into one app, that's not what uh, Facebook is saying. They're basically saying they're gonna just make it easy for us to be able to converse with the other platforms. And you've seen that already, right? So those of you who have got a business account on Facebook, if you go to your business page, and you've gotta have a business page too on Facebook and Instagram, but if you go onto your business page messenger, messaging uh, part, you can actually uh, read your Instagram. I don't think possibly reply to your Instagram uh, messages. We can see all that. That's already there, isn't it? We can already see that stuff. So I think they're gonna be um, including WhatsApp into that as well so that we can see messages um, just easier. It's not gonna be one app. It's just gonna be that we can, uh, in, they all interact with each other basically. And also if you think about it, when people are buying things online, people might say that they prefer to be contacted via WhatsApp. And at the moment that's, you know, it means somebody's gonna have to download the WhatsApp app to be able to get in touch with the person who's selling whatever it is that they're sending. Well, they're basically saying, we're gonna make it so much easier for people to do that. 
Um, and finally, it says secure data storage. You should expect that we won't store sensitive data in countries where it might be improperly accessed because of a weak rule or law or governments that can forcibly get access to your data. So that was obviously in line with the whole um, the US um, elections and the Russian stuff. So this is all what's going on now. He does talk then about how it's going to affect their business model kind of skirts around the issue of what it's actually going to do for business owners but you know <laughs> we'll eventually <laughs> we'll kind of find out what's going to be happening with us um, but I think it's just important to note that guys Instagram if we think about it now Instagram for example uh, Instagram live is already um, disappearing content right because I can go live on Instagram today and within 24 hours it's disappeared so instagram is like the baby facebook okay and they do try out a lot of things on fa uh, on instagram before they roll them out on facebook just be aware of that because they do use instagram as a little bit of a testing platform now what i want to show you um another thing i want to show you and i know that you guys can't see this on ig but um, I, I'll leave uh, some links on Facebook. So if anyone wants to go ahead and read any of these things, you can. This is all public content that I'm sharing with you. Um, so there is a lady called Jane Wong and she tends to find things. I don't know how she does, how she does it, but she tends to find things that are happening with uh, Facebook and Instagram. I think she gets a lot of like the testing stuff that goes on. She seems to find out a lot more about the testing stuff. Now I want to go over to her thing because this was spotted about Facebook testing a new way to view the newsfeed. So we don't, basically it's looking at not having a newsfeed and it going, you know, this is actually shown, they've had something like this on Instagram as well. I think last year they did something and then they went, oh, whoops, sorry, shouldn't have done that. But I think they were testing something and it rolled out to more people than what they envisaged. Maybe it went out to the whole of the US and it was a whole new way of looking at your uh, Instagram newsfeed. And they've done something similar. They're testing out something. Now, at the moment, they've said that this is not... Um, this is nothing that is not going public at any time soon. And I don't know that we're going to see any changes like overnight to the newsfeed. But basically, um, for those of you that are on Facebook, can you see that it's turning our newsfeed into more of a stories thing? And it's lasting each of the things that you're going through. It's lasting for like six seconds. So it's sort of showing something from the newsfeed, what we would normally scroll through. Instead, it's showing it in vertical format and it's flicking it through six seconds long and it goes to the next thing six seconds long goes to the next thing and then some it'll inter it also um uh adds in people that have got stories as well so stories will be the same thing apart from those are split then into uh the the 15 second uh is it 15 seconds for stories um anyway those of you on instagram want to see what i'm doing i'm leaving it up on screen for just a second what do you guys think of that let me know um what you think about this kind of change and how that's happening also you know obviously as well something it's, it's going to be all about something catching your eye you've got you're going to have what six seconds to catch someone's eye on facebook for them to tap whatever it is that they've um whatever it is that they've seen um and because you can if with a story if you want to read a story guys if it's going along the page and you've not quite finished your story you can put your finger on it if you put your finger on your story it will stop it so that you can actually read what somebody has written well it's kind of like a a, a similar thing here um so what else can i share with you let me see okay so another thing here as well um is that she TechCrunch reported that she this, Jane Wong as well she uh, was seeing that you know that um, basically when you create an ad on Facebook that it's gonna look very very similar to our normal content and again if we if we did go in this um, uh, horizontal scrolling format rather than you know going from bottom to top and scrolling down that you're not really because it's going to go by so quickly you're probably not going to know that these things are ads also with the news feed kind of changing people are like oh what's going to happen then with ads because that's where facebook make most of their money yes 
but they are highly focused as well on videos. They are highly focused on stories. They're talking um, now with pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads. They're also talking with the developers of some of the purpose, uh, Facebook purpose TV shows. Have you seen some of the face the purposeful TV shows that are, are made for Facebook? Have you seen the, I think it's the Red Table with Jada Pinkett Smith um, and um, the women in her family. That is, I think it's called the Red Table. Um, quote, t tell me if I'm wrong guys, if you've seen it. Um, and But it's a purpose TV show for Facebook, for the Facebook Watch platform. So what it means is, is that um, they're, they're not actually, <laughs> they're actually creating more ways for revenue because you've got, you've got stories, the ability to, to have your ads in stories. And if you are not doing that right now, I would highly recommend that you try out stories ads. Make sure you've got the infrastructure though behind you to support it so that when people do, um, uh, come come at you for um, um, to to, uh, to purchase from you or to to read or get your downloads etc etc. Make sure that you've got the infrastructure behind that. But um, it's definitely a new way of looking at things. Like I said, this is just tried out, and Facebook has not confirmed this at all um, that they are doing it. But um, um, it's been seen. It's been seen to be tested, whether it actually rolls out or not. We don't know. They might make changes. Facebook have got their F8 conference next week, which is where they go in, he'll be going into a lot more detail about how he's going to be building out, I believe, the uh, private uh, platform. I think I've got some messages. So let me click back over onto my screen, guys. Give me a sec. All right. Let's take a look. Okay. Red table talk. Thank you, Chantel. Hey, Chantel. How are you, doll? Red table talk. Yes. Okay. So Red Table Talk is the Jada Pinkett Smith show. So it's a purpose show for Facebook. Okay. So Facebook, let's, let's just think about Facebook in itself so google and youtube are search engines would you agree with me there google and facebook are search engines in other words you search for content on those two um I, I, they're not really platforms are they i mean youtube is a platform but facebook and uh and youtube are searchable so searchable content uh, it, it, sorry, Google and uh, YouTube are searchable content. Facebook, on the other hand, is not very good with its with it as being a search engine. But what they want to do with the Facebook Watch platform is to become more of a YouTube esque type of um, platform, and they want to compete with things. They've, they've said it. He said it in the past that he wants to move into a more of a Netflix type, um, Netflix type of platform, and he wants to have a share of that revenue of of the money that people get from advertisers. And with this uh, red table talk, for example, uh, with uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, um, they are also looking at because you know how when we when we watch a video and it's really annoying because you're halfway through watching a video and suddenly an ad comes up and they're halfway through a sentence or something. They are uh, talking with these people with the purpose-built shows for Facebook Watch platform. They are looking at being able to create ad breaks so they can say, and we'll be back just after you know these messages. And so that they can pause their show, the ads will roll, which will be non-clickable ads as well. You won't be able to skip them. So non-skippable ads, then they'll go back to the TV shows again interesting has anyone heard that it's just uh that's quite a uh, an interesting way of, of facebook doing that so i think what we're going to see is we're going to have facebook is going to be very different to what we see now uh as in private messaging and then we're going to have the watch platform uh which is going to kind of when the create it's called the it's called facebook creator um, and it's going to take over, I think it might take over our business pages. That's where we're going to be building our businesses on the Facebook Watch platform, which means, guys, you need to be creating videos. 
If you are not creating videos, you need to be creating videos. This is just tells us exactly why. And the best thing about this is, is that more, more videos you create, the more traction you get in the newsfeed, the more organic growth that, we, that you have. Now organic growth, we know organic growth is down like one to 6%. In fact, most people only see somewhere around two to 3% in organic reach on their uh, feeds. Um, but I can tell you that from the fact, because I live stream a lot and I use a lot of video in my content, my reach is actually probably more like 25 to 30 percent organic reach which is fantastic and sometimes it's higher than that as well so if you're not if you're a small business owner and you're not yet using facebook for video you need to be creating video on your facebook the other thing i want to say is is that if you are using your personal profile to build your business now is the time to create a business page and start migrating your followers over to uh, a business page. Because if your personal profile becomes private, what's gonna happen to your content? It is also gonna become private, okay? And it means that it's not going to reach new people, new customers anymore, any longer. So you need to be aware that you that you're going to have to take your um business content and transfer it over onto a specific business page for facebook <clears throat> and i would um start looking at creating it in the creator in the fits uh the creator app i think it's creator.facebook.com <clears throat> i can leave links in um facebook for you uh, in in the comment box in facebook so I would highly recommend if you've been using your profile page for all this time to build your business on, now is not the time to be doing that. Now is the time to be migrating people over onto a specific business page. And in fact, I'm gonna do some training on that inside my private community, which is my private members club, uh, my paid members club. <clears throat> We're gonna be doing some talk about that for anyone that needs some help transferring people over from their private, from their public to their private, uh, from their private account from your profile account to your business page. All right, what else did I wanna talk about? The other thing I wanted to talk about, okay, and the other thing is, I need you guys to be aware of this as well, and I'm going to bring up uh, an image. Um, hold on. Because the other thing that Facebook has Okay, so I'm hoping everyone can see that. I'm going to read this for those of you who are um, listening on the podcast and uh, watching on Instagram. Engagement bait policy. This is the last thing I want to talk to you about for Facebook. Be aware of this, guys. Engagement bait policy. This enforcement previously only affected text, but now includes audio used in videos too. Avoiding phrases like comment below, share this video, tag two friends, or direct call to action tied to liking, commenting, or sharing. So what does that mean? Okay, so clickbait. Clickbait is a term that Facebook used, and this is not new. Um, this is not new, guys. Facebook has been talking about clickbait for a really long time. Now, there's two things with regards to clickbait. Clickbait basically means that you are enticing somebody to like, comment, and share on a post, and it's all about making your post go viral, even though perhaps it's not quality content. And Facebook is, uh, has said that they want to encourage everyone to produce quality content on uh, its platform, okay? Meaningful interactions. That's what Mark Zuckerberg said last year. Meaningful interaction is what they want. Now, originally, what he said was is that... Um, if you're using these words to try and get entice people to you know to click basically it's it's kind of inauthentic they want people to give you the hearts give you the thumbs up you know comment below all this kind of stuff i'm saying this stuff and i'm probably going to get <laughs> my, you know what happens your video goes down in the news feed because you're using all this language but you know what i've got to share it with you guys i'm going to have to say the words um but 
basically back in about 2017 and I can prove this to you guys because for those of you who have been following me for a while know that I produce a magazine oh thank you for the hearts guys um I produce a magazine now let me go on to my magazine if I can find it and I bet you I won't be able to find it now will I give me a sec guys um I produced uh, a magazine last year uh pretty much every month of last year and in January of last year, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. I'm going to prove this to you that we were. Ta I talked about clickbait. I talked about exactly what that means inside the magazine. Okay, so let me go down here, and um, you guys can still get access to this on the Bridal Business School um, website, bridalbusinessschool.com. But here we go. Um, I said, okay, baited posts, I called it. So along with the crackdown on what they call baited posts, basically posts asking followers to like, comment and shares mean. <laughs> it's it's it basically he said that um, that he doesn't want you to, to ask people to do that. Now, like I said, there's there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the reasons was because viral content content that is you know shared multiple times is not um it's not something that we interact with right we just tend to look at it laugh and then maybe share it out but it, you're not actually having any kind of interaction on on that uh, content yeah so to them to facebook you, you're not staying on you're not staying um or you're not you know you're not really spending your time on the platform so having this kind of clickbait thing where you're telling people oh I'll like comment and share my video um basically it's not meaningful what they want you to do is they want people to comment on your videos they want people to, and then by commenting it's like four or five words or more um shows facebook um that they want you to comment which is why as well it's really good to do live because if you can do live um live videos like i'm doing today people do interact with you they interact with you in the comments facebook love that because you're spending time on their platform the second thing about clickbait is that what was happening was is that there was a lot of those um a lot of uh what's it called kind of uh inauthentic websites that were using facebook to get clicks that were kind of just just not genuine so what they were doing is they were showing things like you know a crazy cat video and everyone loves a crazy cat video and we all look at it and we all laugh and it's like you know click here to see more cr crazy cat videos and you click on it and it's not actually more crazy cat videos it's taking you to you know a a, a kind of a uh, website that is you know just trying to maybe get your money or or something like that so this inauthentic so that's what people were doing they were using viral content to get them onto uh websites that were inauthentic and, and not genuine and so what facebook started to do was they would scan the text and go people that are using this language we're going to um not share their content anymore we're not going to push it out into the news feeds but when it comes to content you know like the crazy cat videos like it's viral everyone loves it but people find it funny and then they share it out the problem again then is that it's taking you off of Facebook. Facebook don't want you to leave Facebook. They want you to spend more time on Facebook. <laughs> so it's to them, it's not a, it's not a winning process. So Facebook actually removed like hours, like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of hours of viral video because it, viral video is passive content. It's not content that we interact with enough. So they got rid of a lot of that. So if you're looking for your um, post to go viral, you actually don't want your post to go viral. It's it's not really, unless it's something where people are actually commenting and actually sharing information with you, there's no point in, in really trying to get your, your stuff to go viral on Facebook, okay? And now they're just basically saying that not only now can we read your texts, but we are going to be scanning your videos so that we know that you are not using this information. So just because you think you've got away with it on video now, you're not going to get away with it on video now. So even if we're asking for these things. So um, guys, what do you think? What do you think about this? What, what 
we obviously want people to comment on our videos we also want people to share it you know obviously people as well who are running competitions a lot of the time with the competitions it was you know tag two friends and you know join the competition so what they're saying is they're getting rid of that so it's like well okay what do we do how do we share our content we've got to be quite clever right we've got to be clever with our words we've got to be genuine and authentic so what words could we use instead of you know comment below for example maybe we use things like you know share your thoughts with me what do you think about that start using more open-ended questions to try and get people commenting more on our uh on our facebook's and our facebook posts and our facebook lives so loads of things happening right what do you guys think let me know in the comments hey gretchen how are you going this morning um let me know i think that really we just we just need to be clever about this as marketers i want to encourage everyone to use um video video gets like 50 percent more reach than any other type of content on facebook another thing i want to point out as well guys with facebook and um uh, posting try not to use link posts link posts meaning that you are taking people off of facebook now it can't always be um it, when i'm promoting for my program my become a bride magnet training program like i like to post with the link to say if you guys want to sign up which is open if you want to sign up then you have to click the link so we kind of want to use link posts in our uh in our business but link posts do not reach very well you are actually better to record a video about your products and services and include a link in the description than you are to have a, a link and you yeah so Gretchen just said it as well as well no more youtube posts don't even bother sharing a youtube video on facebook it will not get anywhere and this goes for your profiles this goes for your pages and this goes in your groups as well some of you may have seen that groups have also got a very um a minimal uh, reach as well although having said that i have noticed with groups that the more um the more you interact with your groups let me just share this with you as well because um I mean, a hairdressing group, I'm in the Fanola uh, hairdressing group and Faith who runs that group said that there was a massive drop in her numbers recently because Facebook removed people that weren't, that hadn't been uh, active in the group for a really long time. Now, basically what happens sometimes, especially with the hairdressing groups when they have color formulas, even some of the makeup groups, we, we read posts in the news feed we may not click on them we may not um interact with them so we still have read them because we're still part of the group and we read what's going on but if we're not actually interested in it we don't click on it to to then make a comment so what's happening then is in the to facebook's eyes is that that piece of content you know you're not really interested in that group so if you haven't been interacting in your groups and you want to stay in your groups facebook remove people from the groups who are inactive i don't know and faith told me she didn't know what the criteria was it was it was basically just we you know they've removed she she'd lost like um hundreds of people from her from the group because uh, they obviously hadn't been interacting in the group so facebook like well if you it's not good for you then we'll just you know you can come out of that group now you don't need to be in that group so she literally lost um numbers so um gretchen's saying uh yes heard that was coming wow it happened yes yes donna said hi i panicked and had to check i was still in the finola group few save <laughs> yeah so right donna exactly so um so donna's saying the same thing so she's just checking that she's still a part of it so if you've clicked on a post uh, whether you haven't you don't have to have uh, actually uh, made a comment on a post but if you've clicked on a post to read a post you know it's showing facebook that you're still interactive in that group but just be aware for those of you that do run groups that if you are uh, if you've got high volumes of people in that group and they're not all interacting commenting sharing etc inside the group and they're not talking to their friends inside the group um yeah facebook did remove a lot of people from those massive groups who hadn't been active for a certain period of time i don't i don't know what that period of time was but um yeah they absolutely did that so 
groups though are a big focus for Facebook too. So don't underestimate the power of groups because again, small, intimate conversations with like-minded people, groups are are also huge with uh, Facebook too. So they are they they are encouraging groups. They did a lot of work last year with groups um, and communities, building communities. That's what they want. They want you to build communities in Facebook. So, um, and I, I'm not entirely sure whether groups are going to be encrypted as well. I don't know if that's too much of a, a bigger thing for Facebook to do. Um, but again, like they, they're encouraging groups, they're encouraging this kind of small intimate chats. That's what they like. They like groups. So definitely if you haven't thought about signing a group, that's something to think about. Thank you, Chantel. Chantel saying, wow, great info thank you so much all right guys well i'm gonna let you be happy friday any questions if i can answer them i'll let you know facebook are having as i said their f8 conference uh i want to, i think it's the 29th 30th or 30th and 30th of april 1st of may 30th of april June, yeah 30th of april <laughs> to say the rhyme in my head um so 30th of april 1st of may so they're having their f8 conference where they're gonna mark zuckerberg said he's gonna be sharing more about what's happening with this whole privacy focused facebook and i know that um within all my inner circles of my mentors and stuff i will be able to share that information with you again so we'll do another update probably in may thank you renee thank you guys thank you so much for joining me um, so I hope this has been useful to you guys. I hope that it's uh, shared some information that perhaps you didn't know. I hope it's given you a little bit of food for thought. Guys, video is the key to creating your business and building your business on Facebook. So uh, please, please, please think about that. If you want help with producing videos, let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what, what kind of um education you want me to throw out there and um you know we could do some more training about these things whatever you guys need from me to build your bridal businesses i need to know it so the more information you give me about what you don't know and what you want to know the better so make sure that you share that information with me in any way possible you can do that in any way possible um but i shall see you guys uh probably it definitely will be next week um and i shall speak to you guys then all right Take care, everyone. I'm going to log off and I shall see you guys next week. All right. Bye for now.